Somebody posed a question. How do I put dots on a page in Affinity Publisher, Dave? How do I make a dot grid journal, Dave? Good question. Let's go. Pretty straightforward. This should be relatively quick. I'm going to give you three different tips, sharing the best for last, of course. What's a dot grid, you ask? It looks like this. It's a page with a bunch of dots in a grid formation. Can't get much more straightforward than that. Why would you want to use this? Well, some people like to make low content journals for KDP using a grid just like this. In fact, I'm one of those people and I've done it myself a couple of different times, maybe three or more. I don't even remember. Let's get into it. Now, I'm just using a regular eight and a half by 11 page here. You have to pick your own sizes, but the rules are still going to basically be the same for this. I'm going to be working on the master page here because it's important. You want whatever you do on this sheet to apply to all the other pages that you might want it to, to apply to. If you're not sure about master pages, I'm pretty sure I've got a video for that, so I'll link to it in the description. The second most important thing that you want to do is you want to work with the grid showing. It's that beautiful thing right there. How do you get there? You hit the command and the apostrophe or the control and the apostrophe for PCs, and it will show your grid. I've already got mine set up. Quarter inch grid all the way around. How do you adjust that? Good question. Go up to view, to grid, and access manager. They do have some presets, but they're all metric because, you know, European company. If you're the imperialist like me, what I did is I typed in 0.125 inches. Down here, if you want to adjust the grid lines, the colors and whatnot, you can. You can darken them up or lighten them up. Now, there's some advanced things here, which you're probably not likely going to need to mess with. There's also this cube section. Basically gives you an isometric layout if you wanted to kind of design something to have, you know, dimensionality or whatnot. We're not doing that. One other thing you might want to do is go to view and go into snapping manager and you know set it up for snapping to grid example number one this one's actually the easiest to perform but it's also probably the least flexible first thing I'm gonna zoom in a little bit I'm gonna go to my table tool here and I'm just gonna click right there in the corner and I'm just gonna drag a line down to the first box down and then zoom out just a little bit so I can see my whole page click this and just drag that one cell all the way across. Again, it's important to remember this line down here should be snapped to that grid. So make sure that's happening. I'm gonna back out just a bit. I'm gonna click this arrow and I'm gonna drag all the way down to my last outline there. Didn't do it. One more, Dave, one more. Why are you not doing it? Help me help you. Help me help you. You. If you wanted to do just lines on a journal, this is a good way to do this. I'll show you that real quick. So I'm going to just select all these cells and then I'm going to go over here to that little box right there. This brings up my table settings and what area I'm looking for is this stroke and fill. If I was just going to leave it as lines, the one thing I don't want is the box all the way around. It has all these different settings right here. The outline, the cross, the outline plus the cross, ups and downs, lefts and right. I want to get rid of the outside one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the border only, select the stroke down here and I'm going to click the X. The nope, if I get this right, lines, ta-da! Quick and simple lines for your KDP low content journals. Go sell a billion dollars worth. We're not here for the lines, we're here for the dots. Let's bring that sucker back up again, but this time I'm gonna go right here to this box of the middle row all the way to the right. Because now what I'm doing is selecting all the lines that are just going down. Click on the stroke thing again, but instead of clicking lines, I'm gonna click this dash line right here. And this is where it gets a little bit technical. I'm gonna go right down here to the dashes, keep this one at one, and I'm gonna put this one, was 16 that wasn't quite it. oh i know why because my line was longer you have to figure out what size dots you want i'm gonna bring it up to one and go down here to this one 16.9 nope 16.5 looks pretty good it didn't quite hit all of those points one of the things it didn't do is it didn't give me another one here so if i wanted to i just kind of drag out a little bit and there i've got another one but it's not exactly perfect i mean you can see that it just starts to step off as it goes further and further down now zooming out it doesn't look bad most people won't care about that they just want the grid there just for the basics of understanding like okay this is kind of where i want my dots so i can write my lines or draw little things between them but some people may want it to be more exact because they're going to be doing like drafting notes or they're going to be notating things to scale like one quarter inch equals one foot if that's what you're going for then you're going to want to make sure that you get better measurements than what's going on here so one other thing that you probably noticed is that these are squares and not round circles you can change these to circles you go here to the cap change it to round and you can see that it got a little round there and i'm only selecting the top row right now apparently but if i change that and then go back to the dash it's more of a long dash so we got to make sure that that thing gets smaller okay, that seems to work and then we need it definitely more than one but we'll go 17 I need to bring up my grid so I can see what I'm doing. Grid's way off on this one. And maybe it means I need to adjust my size again to like say 0.9. Oh, I've got it on the sidebar there. That's what's happening. I'm all over the place here with this one, guys. Let's get a little closer. But again, you can start to see, you can see that it's starting to fade. It's starting to move to the right more. So it may be an exact science at some point, but you really kind of have to figure out the math 
on how that works and it may take you a whole lot longer to do that than one of these other options. Option number two uses the pen tool and it's pretty straightforward. I click the pen tool, I go to the first line here, I'm gonna click once and then scroll all the way over to the other side right there, click again. Now I've got a line, oh, and I've already got my line set up. Hey, this is gonna be an easy one. The process is actually very similar to what we just did but it actually works a little bit better. So if we go in here into my stroke, I go to the dash, maybe I just want it at one point. Yeah, it's off on this one now that I changed that. So let's go back to point one. Point one seems to work here still not right there okay so we're gonna have the same issue here guys 17.85 probably is about as good as it's going to get let's go scroll all the way down over here to the other side see it's a little off Could probably go down into the hundreds of decimal points to really get that we're not gonna do that here but if you wanted to do that you could let's take the grid off for a second just so you can see what we're looking at you can see there's our line but I'm gonna bring the grid back because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pen or my arrow tool Select my line at the same time holding option, shift, and drag. I'm just going to drag down until that clicks right into that, that grid line right there. Now, if you don't get it just exactly perfect, it's okay. It's going to be close enough. And now I'm just going to hit Command J, and that's going to duplicate that process. I'm just going to hit Command J, and it's just going to duplicate the process I did there. And I'm just going to hold it, and it's just going to keep going, 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 going. Don't mind that volume control. That was an accidente, alidente. Now, my dots are pretty faint here. Probably could have gone up a little bit heavier, but you can see they're all there. And it does annoy me that they're all not on the grid, but, you know, whatever. Oh, speaking of that, if we do want to make sure they're on the grid, because you can see this one's not quite on the grid either. So I'm just going to bring that. I'm going to bring that down to the grid. Make sure my top one is on the grid. I'm just going to select all. I'm going to go up here to my alignment. And then I'm just going to select space vertically. And it's going to be a subtle little change. But you, as we go now, everything is on. Well, at least on this grid. Not necessarily on that grid, but this grid. Faint. But there, I definitely wouldn't go that faint. In fact, I think if you're doing KDP, I think you have to do it like at least a 0.75. Maybe just go up to a 1 or a 1.5 just to be safe. You know, it just depends on how big a dot you want. Option number three, this is my favorite, and I'll explain why. Wait, 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 wait. Before you go any further, if you're enjoying this content, do me a favor. Go down and hit the like button because you think it's neat, and it helps me grow the channel and get this into the hands of people or eyes. Gets me into the faces of the people that need it, just like you. And you want to help them out, don't you? So do the thing with the thumb. Thank you. Grid back up. Zoom way in. Just going to go in here, bring in an ellipse shape tool, and I'm going to start dragging out. I'm going to hold the command and the shift at the same time. That way I'm going to dr draw something that's symmetrical and goes outward. And I'm going to look at my thing, my dimensions there. I'm going to wait till I get to 0.12. No, I think I'm going to do, what did I do before? 0.05. It's probably a little too big, a little too dark, but we're going to use it. So now I'm going to do that same process where I drag and then copy. So option, shift, and then drag until I click into that next grid line there. Zoom out, make sure I'm not going too far. Then hold down Command and J and just let that sucker ride or hit it a couple times until you get there. If I didn't quite land where I wanted it to be, this is why this one's my favorite, folks. I get it exact, select all, go back up here, align horizontally, and now those are all definitely absolutely 100% all on that grid. Go over here to my layers palette and I'm gonna select all those, group them together, and then I'm gonna do the exact same process and go down. Option shift, drag, command J all the way to the end, baby. Zoom into that bottom one down there. Oh, maybe I didn't quite get it, but let's see, okay. Click, select all, command A, and then back up here, align vertically. Let's get rid of all the extraneous stuff. Group that, and then I'm gonna bring that opacity way down. Ta-da! Super simple, takes a little bit of time. But like I said, if you're doing it on the master page, then you don't have to replicate that page after page after page. Plus, there's an added bonus to this that a lot of people don't ever use or maybe never even considered. I'm gonna replace this one dot right here, bring up my grid. I'm gonna go back over here to my shape tool and I'm gonna put a star. Why would I wanna do that? Maybe I wanted to be unique. Maybe I wanted to do something a little different. Maybe I wanted to kind of add some, some something special. Maybe I'm only gonna put a star every other one. Maybe it's a star and then a diamond. Maybe it's all the suits of the cards. So you got your diamonds and your hearts and your shovels and your clovers. Yeah, I don't know. One other thing I was thinking is that this uh, crescent tool right here, let's say you were doing something uh, horoscope or you know something that has to do with astrology or whatever. You could do this and then create new phases of the moon. Of course, you want them to be small and you don't want them to be big like this, but you know, you can just go in here and change that moon phase a little bit, add another one and change that moon phase just a little bit and then add another one change that moon phase just a little bit i'm just saying that this method here we're dropping one dot and then copying it all the way across and copying them all the way down gives you more flexibility to do something more interesting plus you're going to be more accurate this way than any other option now you're well on your way to becoming a kdp millionaire go get down with your bad self if you want to know exactly how i feel about kdp and the things that you could do with that you're going to want to watch this video right here okay guys i'm going to get out i hope you enjoyed this remember be good today be even better tomorrow see ya
Don't forget to hit the like button.